Mississippi Valley State head coach Kendrick Wade. Coach Wade, the first question is, obviously you're an alum, so that makes this job a no-brainer, but why was this the time you decided to return to Valley as a head coach? I mean, everything lined up uh, correctly, just getting the, getting the right AD in place, the right administrators, instru- uh, administrators I'm sorry, in place, uh, really was the key point for me, and um, it was just on my spirit that right now was the time to come on back. Over your first few months on the job, what's been the biggest challenge for you thus far at Mississippi Valley State? I won't say the biggest challenge. I'll say the greatest opportunity has been able to get these um, kids out the portal and just go and recruit. This has been a, the greatest opportunity that we've had to be able to flip this roster. We've signed 61 new players since we've taken the job. Uh, today is uh, 190th day on the job for me today. So um, being able to get 61 new players, 25 high school kids, uh, 21 transfer, and 15 JUCO kids, it's been amazing. When you, your staff is young, but it's very promising. There's a lot of talented guys on that staff. What were you specifically looking for when building your staff? Not only great coaches, great recruiters, and great people. I want my guys to be around great men. You know, because I want us to model the behavior that we expect them to show. So you have to be a great recruiter, um, relentless pers- uh, recruiter, as you can see. Uh, you had to be a great man, you know, to be able to model what we want these kids to see. The transfer portal's exploded. You guys have really hit that hard, especially with the JUCO circuit. Moving forward, because the first class is always unique, right. but year to year, how do you, your recruiting coordinator, Coach Anderson, plan to balance the transfer portal along with high school recruiting and the loaded JUCO circuit in the state of Mississippi? I mean, honestly, I can't answer that right now. It's just so many changes and pieces all the time. You know, we may have 15 kids leave this after this year. I mean, so you just never know. So I think each year with the way it is now with the portal, it's just an independent year. You just, you don't know. We have an idea of what we want to do, but, I mean, we got to be ready to adjust on the fly. Looking back when you were a player at Valley, mm-hmm. did you ever think that you would be the face of the program as the head coach? Looking back, was coaching always in your, like, vision as, as a future plan? Absolutely. Even as a player, at some point I knew. I used to look in the in 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 stands and say, you know what, one day I'm a coach here. So I kind of knew it would happen. I, I didn't know exactly when, but I knew it would happen at some point. Throughout the spring, of course, there's a lot of new faces on the roster. Who are some names that we should look out for that have really caught your eye throughout these first, throughout the spring and the first few weeks of summer? Just the spring, uh, Jamar Jones did a really good job at quarterback. Uh, Cam Gardner, uh, tight end, uh, I think he's going to be a really big time ball player for us. Uh, Bobby Shanklin, a running back we brought in from Colin, is really good. Kobe Chambers, a receiver from East Mississippi, uh, did a really good job. Uh, Brandon Williams, a kid that came over with me from Delta State, I mean, he did an amazing job. He's a quarterback of the defense. Uh, Anthony Blakely, a kid who played at Valley a, a few years ago, hadn't played. He's going to be a really good football player for us. And uh, up front, Dietrich Jones, young kid, he a true freshman uh, last year. He's done an amazing job. I think he's going to be a big-time football player this year. When you look at year one expectations, where are you and your staff setting the bar? What's the message in the locker room on what you want from your guys throughout year one? Winning things each and every day. We don't focus on the outcome. We just focus on doing winning things each and every day. So, you know, I don't like throwing some number out that where we win five games, you know, it's been a successful season. So we don't put limits on ourselves. So we just do winning things each and every day. When you look at just, I would say college football in general now, man, from your time in the SWAC to now, what's the biggest changes around the conference that you've noticed personally? Exposure. Um, you got a lot more kids that want to be HBCU. Uh, we have a lot of kids that we got from the portal that come from PWI who's just excited to be at HBCU. So um, I think Dion did a good job as far as bringing the exposure to it, as far as bringing ESPN and all of the other, other entities that came with it. Um, so people are excited to be in the swag, man. The final question, Coach. There's different ways co- head coaches approach their first job. Are you going to be more of a CEO? Or are you going to be very hands-on with the positional group or even calling the plays? I'm not calling the plays. Um, I guess you can give me the CEO title. Um, because there's a lot of business that got to get handled. There's a lot of business that had to be straightened out around that valley. So I'd be more hands-on once we get into the fall. But right now, um, I'll be sitting in a, in, a, in a CEO role. Coach Wade, I appreciate you joining me here at yep. Swat Media Day, man. Congratulations on the new job and good luck on your first season. Thank you, man.